Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and, and your, your words, words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading for today is from Romans chapter 6. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So about a month ago, we had some pretty exciting Sundays to celebrate on the church calendar. Not all of them were exciting, though, depending on how you looked at it. There was Ascension, and then the week after that, there was Pentecost, and then the week after that, there was Holy Trinity, and then we entered into ordinary time, right? Not as exciting. So, but today, I have this news for you. Depending on how you look at it, there is another special occasion that some of you might think of as something that you look forward to every year. Are you ready for it? Christmas in July on the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Does anybody get excited about it? Right? So Christmas movie is like all month long, right? So depending on how you look at it, maybe this is exciting, maybe it's not. But in the church year, today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, also known as Lectionary 13 Year A. So I think the Hallmark Christmas movie stuff is way more exciting. But these past several weeks, we've been working our way through the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. And it hasn't been very easy. Jesus has been talking to the disciples about some really hard stuff. He is sending them out into the world to share the good news of God's love. And he's keeping it real. He's told them that in this work that they will do as disciples, he's told them they will be challenged. They will have power over evil spirits. They will be persecuted. They will be turned away. They will be cut off from family members. But the disciples, they knew they had this important work to do. And what we've heard about this important work for the past few weeks, it's all been pretty intense. So if we're excited about anything in the church year, in the calendar of the church year today, it should be that we're finishing up this 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And this reading for today, it's not challenging, it's super, not super difficult, because today we hear about how everything in the past couple of weeks, it just seems rather anticlimactic, because after all that complicating, challenging stuff, all these instructions about how to be a disciple, how to share God's love with others, today we hear it all basically comes down to offering someone a cup of cold water. So today we hear Jesus go from giving the disciples complicated and challenging instructions to talking about the simple acts of the people who welcome the disciples. Jesus says, whoever welcomes you, the disciples, welcomes me, Jesus. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now, the little ones that Jesus is talking about are the very disciples that he has given the complicated and challenging instructions to. The people who are giving even a cup of cold water, those are the people who welcomed the little ones, who welcomed the disciples. So these are the people who would answer the door when the disciples showed up. So by answering the door, by offering a cup of cold water, these people are now part of this awesome and amazing, powerful story of God's redemptive work in the world. Because by a small gesture, such as giving someone even just a cup of cold water, they are drawn into this awesome work of the disciples, and therefore they are drawn into this powerful and life-changing work of Jesus through this very simple act. So today we hear about how even the seemingly little things that we do in the name of Christ are part of God's work to love, bless, and change this world. I'm going to tell you a story that might help you understand how powerful doing something as simple as offering someone a cup of cold water in the name of Christ can make a difference. It's a story that I used to tell kids who were in my cabin group when I worked as a camp counselor. And you may have heard this story before. I might have shared this story before with you. But it's called The Star Thrower. You might be familiar with it. It was written by Lauren Isley. It was published in 1969. And this is the story. Once upon a time, there was a woman who used to go to the ocean to do her writing. And she had a habit of walking on the beach every morning before she began her work. Early one morning, she was walking along the shore after a big storm had passed, and she found the vast beach littered with starfish as far as the eye could see, stretching in both directions. Off in the distance, the woman noticed a teenage girl approaching. And as the girl walked, 
She paused every so often, and as she grew closer, the woman could see that she was occasionally bending down to pick up an object and throw it into the sea. The girl came closer, and the woman called out, Good morning. May I ask what it is that you are doing? The young girl paused, looked up, and replied, Throwing starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them up onto the beach, and they can't return to the sea by themselves. When the sun gets high, they will die, unless I throw them back into the water. The woman replied, but there must be tens of thousands of starfish on this beach. I'm afraid you won't really be able to make much of a difference. The girl bent down, picked up yet another starfish, and threw it as far as she could into the ocean. Then she turned and smiled at the woman and said, it made a difference to that one. So this story has also been adapted into a children's book. I love it. It's a children's book. It's called Sarah and the Starfish. And it retells that story from the eyes of the young girl as well as through the eyes of one of the starfish itself. The overall message of the story is the same, but in that version you get to hear two different perspectives. I think sometimes we can be quick to put ourselves in the place of the one who is doing the giving of the cup of cold water, like the girl in the story who is saving all those starfish. But when you are the one who is receiving the cup of cold water, I think sometimes that can be a different story. What's it like to be the starfish? We've all been there. For them, what the girl was doing was a matter of life and death. And we know that we all have this opportunity to create positive change, right? We know we can create positive change, but if you're like me, maybe sometimes you find yourself thinking things like, there's no way I can save all the starfish, I can't help everyone, I'm already really busy, how much of a difference can I really make? And I think this is especially true when we're talking about like life and death type situations and addressing massive problems, these big deal problems like ending, the, ending world hunger or preventing war. So maybe when we find ourselves kind of feeling discouraged, we can remember that just making God's love known in situations, a cup of cold water one day at a time, it can change everyday lives. We know that we have so many opportunities to do this, to feed our neighbor, to speak out against violence, to care for each other. So when we do feel get discouraged, we're feeling hopeless about it, it helps to remember that sometimes even a cup of cold water makes a difference. And when we see the challenge before us as maybe too big or too overwhelming, I think a good way for us to start is to break that big challenge down into smaller pieces and then take them one at a time like one starfish at a time, or one cup of cold water at a time. Because to that one starfish, and that one person who receives the water, it might make a world of difference. You never know. When you see a need that needs to be met, or an opportunity to reach out and share God's love with others, you can shrug your shoulders, you can go about life as usual, because maybe you might think you don't know what to do, or you think you can't possibly make a difference, Or you might think that maybe you won't be affected by the change, so maybe it isn't worth it. Or maybe you can offer a cup of cold water by doing something like checking in on someone or sharing resources you have like food or money or finding ways that you can communicate to others that as children of God, we are all worthy of being taken care of no matter what it takes. Maybe giving someone a cup of cold water in some situations looks like entering into an honest conversation with people about what it means to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Trusting God's promise to care for the whole world and for everything in it, it empowers us to be part of it all by caring for who we can whenever we can. You might have heard the saying before that we are not required to complete this work, but neither are we released from doing the work. So we can live our lives giving out those cups of cold water, and in doing so, we are part of God's awesome and powerful redemptive work in our world. Today, we hear about how nothing has to be heroic. I mean, sure, sometimes some of it will be pretty amazing, but today we hear that even the smallest things count. Offering someone a cup of cold water 
counts, makes a difference. Praying for someone who is struggling matters. Sitting with someone who is grieving is important. Smiling at someone on the street counts. And offering words to each other has a powerful impact on our world. Those kind words, those positive words. So it's pretty amazing, I think, when you think about how we have the opportunity to be genuine disciples, to make a difference in our world each and every day with each and everything that we do. So loved children of God, in the kingdom of God, there is no small gesture when it's done in faith. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, for any near death, and for all who grieve. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in childcare settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, childcare workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, you reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Come to the table. There is a place for you. Please be seated. If you are receiving communion in your pews, I invite you to get your little cups out. Or if you're worshiping online, I invite you to get your bread, your crackers, your wine, or your grape juice prepared. You may peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer. If you're worshiping online, you may eat your bread or your crackers. You may eat that wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you're with somebody who has not received the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead or in the space in front of them and say the words, you are a loved child of God. I invite you to peel off that next layer of the cup that goes to the grape juice. If you're worshiping online to drink your wine or your grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you wish to come forward to receive the sacrament, I invite you to follow the instructions of our ushers.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have, we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.